as time passes in inexorably, we are having to face choices. At every moment, just as Mukesh said, you choose whatever you are drinking, you are eating, and what you're wearing. But those are everyday life choices. We are facing also some deeper choices, like what profession do we want to exert? What kind of uh, partner do we want for our lives? What job do we want to accept? Or um, where do we want to live? And I want you to think back about these moments where you had to make these choices. And I guess most of the time, they were painful. Even sometimes getting, you know, to choose what you're wearing is painful. So what about job offers and everything else? And sometimes we regret also certain choices. Making choices can be painful. And that is why we are trying to find ways to make them less painful. Why are they so painful? One is that there is responsibility associated with choice making. Whenever we are choosing something, there's a responsibility that we have to bear, consequences that we have to live with, right? And just as Alina said, you are part of an environment. You are part of uh, a whole society. So whatever choice you're making, not just affects yourself, but it affects also other people. And the other thing is, choice making is experiencing loss, almost grief. Because when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to almost everything else. If you say, I want to become a medical doctor, then basically you're saying no to a career as a lawyer or a pilot. I know I had this difficulty because I have changed my career five times in my life. <laughs> With four master degrees, so I have been constantly looking for something else. I never regretted my choices, but some of them could have been avoided and I would have gained time, definitely. So, we have to face these losses, but also we have to face uncertainty, because every time we're making a choice, it is a leap of faith, it is a risk, and we are so afraid of actually missing out, making a false move, or being judged for what we uh, have done, or what we are going to do, right and wrong, just as Adina said. People are so judgmental, and we are judgmental without, with ourselves. So we try to make it easier, and therefore we're trying to rationalize things. We are gathering information, we are making mind maps, decision-making trees, maybe we're going to do a, a more sophisticated SWOT analysis in order to find out the best optimal solution for something. This is also what school has been uh, teaching us, right? But optimal logic never worked. And utilitarianism was one of the 19th century philosophers biggest, I don't want to say lie, but a little bit something that was um, oversold back then, because it's just not happening. And there's a ton of TED Talks that deal with cognitive biases and that tell us how choice making actually is not based on uh, or rationality, but on the very fallibility of our minds, that the cognitive biases that we are facing uh, and the limits of our rationality are actually founded in our education, in our social background, in our cultural background, and everything else. My last TED talk was exactly about cognitive biases, so I, I also spoke a little bit about this. And the conclusion was, we just don't, uh, we're not perfect, basically, in this arena. So, why do we do this? Because Fundamentally, something that is at the root of a decision making, whenever our mind reaches its limits, whenever our mind is not good enough anymore, it is our feeling. It is a subconscious emergence of something that is inside of us, a physical experience that tells us what it is that I actually maybe we want to do. Emotions and feelings. The notion of emotion and feelings is a very deep one, and I don't have time today to go into all the ramifications it has in mental health care, in clinical psychology, in um, all aspects of psychology, basically. But one thing that I can say is, globally, people don't like emotions. And there was a very interesting uh, analysis, actually there's several analysis of uh, 
emotions, but one which is very famous is that of Gloria Wilcox from, 19, uh, from 1982, which shows an, an emotion wheel, and there's a ton of different emotions, but guess what? In the seven fundamental emotions, only one was positive, and the six others are all negative. It's anger, sadness, fear, just something called bad, or disappointment, disgust, and so on. Only happiness is a happy, is, is, a, is a positive feeling. So it shows that really we are not very much comfortable with our own emotions. And many times in my clinic, uh, many times in my everyday life, but also people that I'm working with in my clinical practice are needing to work on their negative emotions, on anger management, or uh, of, of course all their clinical emergences in anxiety, depression, and so on. Most of us treat emotions as if it was something uncontrollable, something that is a little bit like a space rocket at takeoff, a wild barking dog that is running around and, and trying to bite us or something like that, or something childish, a little child that actually is just screaming to have ice cream, and we don't know exactly how to talk to that little kid. Actually, that little kid is, in our, in, is inside of us. It's our little inner child that is screaming. So, we need to try to manage these emotions. But let me tell you this, there's a good news, it's actually okay to have emotions. It's part of our human condition. And we should not shun away from feeling these emotions. We should not be ashamed of our emotions. And um, there are actually precious information about ourselves. Emotions, why do we have emotions in our body? Basically because our body is telling us what it is that we want, what it is fundamentally that we are, what it is fundamentally that we want to be. How do we want to feel in the future? How do we want to feel tomorrow or maybe next year? Emotions feed us with so much information about ourselves, of who we are now and who we want to be and who we want to be with as well because in the relationships, we are also being fed with emotions. It is through emotions that we assert our ultimate freedom to be, because emotions is something that nobody ever can take away from us. You can be brainwashed, or your mind can be changed out of fed wrong information, but emotions will never be wrong. Because emotions, you might not understand them, you might misinterpret them, you might not like them, but they're always there, and they're always there in one of their most purest form, which is a physical, phenomenological uh, perception of yourself. So, I actually think that the Cartesian, I think, therefore I am, is completely outdated. Nowadays we have artificial intelligence who is much smarter and much better at thinking and rationalization than we are. But I would say that actual human humanity would be defined by emotions, and therefore we should replace the I think, therefore I am, by I feel, therefore I am. Because that is the actual definition of nowadays what it is to be a human being. Now, but still, we don't know how to, how to do this, right? We need to learn to in integrate emotions into the equation of our choice making. And there are many ways that we can do this. Some would go to see a psychologist, right? I'm working with a lot of people who have trouble with that. But I would actually also um, ask yourself a little bit to face your emotion, try to understand them. Emotions are tricky because very often we think that we have a certain emotion and it's not really that. Anger, for example, is a complex emotion that actually can have in itself a lot of other components. You might be angry, not because somebody just uh, annoyed you, but because maybe you're afraid, maybe you're sad, maybe you're disappointed, maybe you're disgusted by the, the uh, behavior of other people. Maybe you're disgusted by yourself that you are next to these people or whatever. I mean, it is a very complicated system of uh, things that make you have these emotions. And very often I hear people telling me, oh, I feel like this. And I think again, 
Uh, it's not that. It's absolutely not that. Are you sure? And then they reflect and actually know, you know? Um, let me give you an example. And that also relates to, to this decision making or choice making. When you have a job offer, I mean, let's say you are right now having a job and then comes a job offer and you think about, should I accept this job offer or not? Depending on the mood or the mental state or your emotion that you're in right now, you might have completely different outcomes. And for example, if in this very moment you are in a stage in your life where you're feeling a little bit insecure, you're feeling a little bit um, anxious, you don't know exactly what you want to do and so on, chances are that you will not accept the, the, the job because you will want to stay in your comfort zone. You will want to stay where you are and feel just secure. However, if you feel that you're not recognized enough, you're not valued enough, then you will definitely look at the price, uh, at the salary increase and the package because you want to gain more, you want to earn more. If, on the, on the other hand, you feel like, oh, I'm not uh, socially recognized enough, I'm not admired enough, I'm not loved enough, I'm not um, yeah, seen enough, I'm not visible enough, then maybe you will look at the status the new job will provide you with, the title, the prestige, the, the yeah, reputation that you will gain from this. Or, if you feel that um, you're more concerned about what other people think about you, how will your parents think about your job, how will your friends qualify your latest position or something like that? In this case, maybe you will look at the company's reputation, the fame, how it resonates with people. Like, oh, I'm working for Alibaba. I was very proud in my times to work for L'Oreal in France because L'Oreal is a very famous name for a company and everybody who's looking at you in, in France is like, oh, wow, you're working for L'Oreal. That's so class. You must meet a lot of beautiful women there, right? <laughs> So, that is a little bit one of the examples of how um, choice, emotions can affect our, our choices. Last example here, a more deeper one. But imagine that you have just received a diagnostic for a terminal stage of cancer. And you only have six months to live. How would that affect your choice making? I bet that you would probably look away from all the long-term plans that you have made. And we'll probably start to enjoy every second of your life, every moment, every meal with your family, every meal with your friends, every night, every morning, every day, would start to become increasingly uh, meaningful because you don't know how long you, you will have to live. So we need to look at our emotions clearly. And my contention would be that the educational system needs to increase a little bit the education around what it is to really feel. How can we understand our emotions? What's happening inside of us? Because we are taught so well about gathering information, analyzing data, rationalizing, and in the end coming to some sort of logical conclusion which we might use as our choices. But think about it, how many times was there a conclusion, a fantastic report with a brilliant conclusion made by some brilliant consultants and the final choice was completely different? And how comes? Well, I don't know, probably emotions. So, emotions are this big chunk, this big, big black box, a little bit also the black sheep that we don't want to face and that we don't want to integrate into our choice making uh, equation. Kids need to learn that. But I will conclude on this for you. Next time you have to make a significant choice, ask yourself, how do I really feel about this? And what is the true feeling? What is really going on? Don't start with the first feeling. I want you to at least enumerate five to ten feelings and emotions that are related to this very situation. Don't stop with one. Because if you just stop, start with one, you will necessarily miss the, miss the most important part and the real emotions that are underlying there. Also, do integrate emotions into the equation of your choice making because otherwise you might be defined by your emotions without knowing it. 
The French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre say, we are the sum of our choices. And if the choices are so much influenced by our emotions, well, where does this, does this leave us? Basically, we are defined by emotions that we don't ask them, that we don't know about, that we don't really want to see or face. I have met so many people in my clinical practice whose lives were oriented around fear, anxiety, uh, hatred sometimes, or traumas. People that have been bullied in their teenager years and have spent the next 30 years making up for it through hatred and disgust because of what they have been going through in their childhood. So don't let your emotions define you. Face them, identify them, understand them, and only in this way you can know who you really are right now, and you can change things so that you can decide who you want to be and feel who you want to be in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>